I'm Dr. Tama, a minister, licensed psychologist, and sacred artist, and this is Homecoming, a podcast to facilitate your journey home to yourself. While I will provide weekly inspiration and mental health tips, this podcast is not a substitute for therapy. I'm so excited you're on the journey. If you want to request specific topics or share your progress, email me at homecomingpodcast at gmail.com. Also, after you listen, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Let's begin. I am so excited that you all are joining for another episode, and today our focus is stopping the self-sabotage. And we want to start with reading vows from one of our co-journers, Alexandra Ahern, and I so appreciate you, Alexandra, sending us your vows. And for those who have not emailed yet, the email is homecomingpodcast at gmail.com. And Alexandra writes to herself, My dearest friend, it's time to be the type of friend to yourself that you have been to others your whole life. There is no one on this earth as deserving of your full, joyful, and abundant love as you are. For too long you have let yourself live in the shadow of others, allowed them to boost themselves up as you sunk down. You are too radiant not to let your rays of light shine on your own heart. Your energy is infinite and your mind is at peace. I love you. I am learning to love you. I am learning who you are and I am embracing your purpose on this earth. In meditation when I am one with you is my favorite place to be on earth. You are your own guiding light. You were neglected, but that neglect ends with you. I am breaking the cycle for you, for the little girl that needed and deserved more. I am the mentor I always needed. I am becoming more sure daily, and my growth is like a daisy, so beautiful and taking its time to come out just as it's meant to. I love you. I love that you make mistakes because I always learn something from them. I am no longer afraid for you to be wrong because you're just so right. To you, I say yes. Oh my goodness, Alexandra, we love your vows. And I believe those who are listening want to internalize them, want to flow from that place of self-acceptance, of self-celebration, of being for ourselves what we often missed and may not have received from others. But thank you so much for saying yes to you and yes to the homecoming. And this flows perfectly with our topic on today, which is self-sabotage. What are the things that keep us away from ourselves for so long. At the root, there were usually external events and exchanges with people that disconnected us from ourselves. But as we start on this journey, we begin to awaken to the ways that we have participated in our disconnection. We begin to awaken to the ways in which we let walk through months and years of our lives, we start to recognize the ways we internalized the voices and opinions of others and got tied up in that. Really a bunch of cobwebs around our heart, around our mind, around our wings. So when I awaken to the reality that I have played a part in my disconnection, once I get past the grief of that, it actually is quite liberating, empowering, exciting, because if I had the power to delay some things, it also means I have the power to accelerate some things. If I had the power to block some things in my life and in my heart and in my purpose and in my dreams, it also means that I have the power to be activated, to embrace 
to launch in this season. And we recognize the ending of self-sabotage means that it has always been within me to win. It has always been within me to have wisdom. It has always been within me to have capacity, to have strength, to have power, to have love. I no longer have to wonder, is it possible for me to have a fuller, more authentic life than this? When I see the ways I have kept my foot hovering over the brakes or slamming down on the brakes when I realize I've been living with my emergency brake lifted. And then it also means when I am truly free to be myself, when I am truly at home with me, I can only imagine the amazing things that will manifest when I get out of my way. And I am excited about the seeds that have been buried within you that as you come home are blossoming. I am excited about the you that has been neglected but did not get destroyed. I am even excited about the glimpses of yourself that may frighten you Because what would happen if you really shine? What will happen when you really walk in the fullness of all that you are? It can be overwhelming. It can be frightening. It can be confusing. Because even though we're claiming homecoming, I just believe this adult version of you has never fully been known. And as we work to end the self-sabotage, there are some important steps that we want to take on this journey. And the first question you have to ask yourself is, do I want to leave the planet with seeds still in me? Am I content to play it safe, even when playing it safe does not fulfill me? Am I content to walk in circles when I know I have wings? And I just believe, because you're listening to this podcast, that there is a part of you bigger than the fear. There is a part of you bigger than shame and guilt. There is a part of you that no perpetrator or abuser has been able to demolish. And that part in you is the one who wants to come home. That part of you is the one that wants to be everything you're on the planet to be. And so, Let us take a look at these steps on the journey of ending the self-sabotage. The first thing is we have to recognize the ways in which we have been sabotaging ourselves. Because some who are not familiar with the term may think this episode does not apply to them. But I want you to know if you are not fully at home in yourself, that there is a role that you have played in that process. So you may not have been the source of your disconnection. We talked about trauma and grief and neglect being sources of disconnection. But once we have been given those scripts of unworthiness, there are ways in which we continue to get in our own way. And so to recognize it, I think one of the ways that we get in our own way is by overthinking. We call that ruminating in psychology and therapy. When I ruminate on issues, I replay it. I, because of my self-doubt and insecurity, I never feel comfortable stepping forward. I am perpetually planning and preparing for the worst. I am perpetually talking myself out of what is possible for me. I am perpetually 
delaying and procrastinating and shooting holes in my own vision board. And this keeps me from activating. I said in an earlier podcast that some of us hide behind confusion. If I continue to say I don't know and I'm not sure, it lets me off the hook. I don't have to walk in purpose if I keep saying I don't know what it is. And I encourage you on today to acknowledge what you know. I encourage you on today to journal about the reality that some things are a mystery, some things I don't know, but there are some things about myself. There are some things about my gifts. There are some things about my calling. And when I say calling, that's not just something I like to do. It is something that awakens me on a soul level. And so there are some things about my calling, my gifts, my purpose that I know for sure. I may not know the outlet. I may not know how exactly it's going to manifest, but I know these things about myself for sure. And we shift out of confusion into clarity. And that is one of the ways we end the self-sabotage. There is a saying that when you are leaving your house for work, you don't wait for all of the lights between your house and your job to turn green before you leave the house. You just leave knowing they are going to be some stops along the way, but those stops don't make you turn around and go home. You keep going forward because you have somewhere to be. And just like we do that for a job when we are working for somebody else, how much more can we do that when it is our soul's calling that is ahead of us? That I do not have to wait for everything to be lined up perfectly. I do not have to wait until I am wealthy. I do not have to wait until everyone celebrates me. I do not have to wait until somebody hooks me up. But I'm just starting to walk from where I am, this place of being stagnant and stuck and self-sabotaging. And I am walking toward my possibility, toward my calling, toward my purpose, and more so, more so, more so, I am walking toward me. <laughs> because this other woman who I have been living as is not the full manifestation of me. She is a representative that has been living in my place out of my own fear and insecurity, but she is not actually me. And so I begin to walk toward the fullness of who I am. Not only do we overthink things, uh, but we accommodate too much. This goes with our prior topic about extreme people pleasing. When I put everybody else in front of me, everybody's needs, calling, purpose, wants, desires in front of my own, that becomes a form of self-sabotage and self-delay. There are some external delays that we have not had power over, but I wonder if you will tell yourself the truth today about the things you held up. I wonder if you can tell yourself the truth today about the things that you delayed. I wonder if you can tell yourself the truth today about the ways in which you chose the distraction of other people's busyness and agenda to give you time to delay your destiny. So we get to a place when I want to end the self-sabotage is I stop looking for new projects. I stop looking for what everybody else needs and wants. I stop going from being everyone's cheerleader while not cheering for myself. Are you willing on today? to give yourself the encouragement that you give to others? Are you willing on today to challenge yourself the way you so easily challenge others? 
Uh, We are good at getting other people together. We are good at being able to look at somebody else's life and see that they need to activate, to see that they need to mobilize, to see that they are stalling. It is so much easier to see it outside of ourselves. But on today, can we turn that gaze inward? Can we check ourselves and be honest? about the many times we have chosen distraction over destiny. And let me say that we don't just get distracted by other people's agenda or purpose, but sometimes we create side visions that are distractions. When we are living out of alignment, when we are living from a place that is inauthentic, but perhaps is impressive to others, or perhaps because it feels stable. One of the ways that we self-sabotage, one of the reasons we self-sabotage is fear. And I understand that. I understand that deeply and intimately. It is frightening to be a dreamer. It is frightening and sometimes exhausting to be visionary. It is frightening to leave that pond and head for the ocean. Many of us choose what is comfortable, what is familiar, what is easy. We are afraid to rock the boat. And even though we barely fit in this pond, we hang out here because we know it. But there comes a point in our lives where the pond is actually suffocating. The reason you're so bored is because your gifts have no outlet. The reason you are so frustrated is because you were never meant to stay in that pond. The reason you are so irritated is because you are a frustrated dreamer. So when we shift out of self-sabotage and take the risk of facing our fears, that's when the frustration can come down. That's when the boredom can come down. For some of us, even that's when your aggressiveness will come down. Sometimes we are fighting other people because we are mad at ourselves. Sometimes we are fighting and going off on other people because we are disappointed with our own lives. And it's so much easier to dump that on other people than to take stock of my destiny and make some internal shifts that are required for me to get this self-sabotage off my back, out of my mind's eye, off of my heart, off of my spirit. I am hoping on today that you shake yourself loose. I am hoping on today that you become aware of a third type of self-sabotage, and that is selling ourselves short. We end up sabotaging ourselves professionally, educationally, spiritually, and can I even say romantically? Because we do not fully believe we are deserving of wonderful things. And when I do not believe I am deserving of wonderful things, I will cling to mediocre things. Oh, my goodness. We will cling to mediocre jobs because we do not really believe we are deserving of being entrepreneurs. We do not really believe we are deserving of launching into the deep. When we sabotage ourselves spiritually, we stay with spiritual practices that are about control, that are very regimented, uh, that focus on discipline, but no spirit. And that is when our spiritual lives are one of habit, but nothing is truly happening on the inside because I am standing in the way of my own spiritual liberation. Romantically, it manifests by me holding on to people who only have the capacity to see, to celebrate, to respond to a fraction of who I am the diluted version of myself that I present to them because they cannot handle the whole thing. And I will hold on to that and I will cling to that because of my fear, because of my insecurity, because of my doubt that I could ever really be loved fully. 
And so I will hold on to fractions and crumbs. This is a form of self-sabotage where I ignore what I see. I ignore mistreatment by friends. I ignore mistreatment in the dating arena because to see it would require me to do something about it. And I don't feel confident to step away from it because I don't see what I would step into, not knowing I can stand within my own soul. So we sabotage ourselves by playing it small, by selling ourselves short, by convincing ourselves this is the best we can hope for. I hear this in clients who are at toxic, toxic jobs, but they say, well, every job is going to be stressful, so I'm just going to stay here. People who are in toxic, toxic, toxic relationships, and they will cover that by just saying, well, everyone has issues, so I'm just going to be here. People who have surrendered to toxic, toxic, toxic habits of self-destruction and their response is, well, everybody has something and this is just my thing. Do we believe we can be made whole? Do we believe that we can live well? Do we believe that we can love well? Even those who are living with conditions, mental health conditions, physical conditions, to believe even with my condition, I can live a full life. Even with my diagnosis, I can live an abundant life. We also sell ourselves short when we look at how we handle finance. Our commitment to sabotaging our money is absolutely amazing. It is amazing that no matter how much we make, we still manage to live in such a way that we are stressed out and don't have enough. I am not talking about poverty. I am talking about the ways in which, if we are honest, at times each of us across the economic spectrum have sabotaged our finances. The ways in which each of us have made choices in the moment that created incredible stress for our tomorrow. This is also a form of self-sabotage. So I have to start to see it and begin doing the work of self-love, begin doing the work of self-compassion. I do not sabotage people I love because I love them. If I was standing with a friend who was talking to a potential employer, I would start singing the praises of my friend because I believe they're worthy and I believe they should be chosen and because I love them and because I think they're amazing. I would not dare talk to a future employer about my friend in a way that was demeaning, disrespectful, sabotaging. I would never sabotage the future, the possibility, the work, the love life, the finances of my friends. I would not do it. And so it is time for me to friend myself. <laughs> In social media, everybody wants to have friends. They want to have friends. They want to have likes. They want to have connection. But this homecoming is about being a friend to myself, giving myself some likes, shifting how I think about myself, how I talk about myself, how I set myself up. So this week, our homework is to one, journal about the ways that we have stood in our own way this week. I'm not even going to say 10 years ago. To look at the ways we have sabotaged ourselves, delayed ourselves, delayed our possibility this week, and then I make a commitment to myself that when the negative self-talk comes in my mind, I cannot stop the thought from popping up, but I can kill it. <laughs> I can dispute it. I can speak life over myself to acknowledge that the thought that popped in my head is not the fullness of my value, my worth, nor my story. So I am a work in progress and you are a work in progress. And yes, we are not perfect. And yes, we are deserving of love, of compassion, of respect. So I will challenge those negative thoughts that pop up in my mind. And I will be careful 
about the ways I speak about myself. I will not speak doom and gloom over my future nor over my present. I will not put myself down perpetually in conversations with people. Can I tell you, sometimes we do that because we're fishing for compliments. Sometimes we will talk negatively, hoping and waiting for someone to disagree. And that is not a healthy place to be in. I want to get so at home with me that I can affirm myself, that I can write the vows to myself, that I am not hungry for someone to speak what I refuse to speak over myself. Then when I encounter friendships and relationships and mentors and therapists who speak life to me, then that what they speak will be in agreement with what a part of me already knows. Even if I don't fully see it every day, all day long, that there is within me a part of me that knows better, a part of me that does actually care about me, a part of me that does see myself trying. And I honor that. I recognize that. I appreciate that. And so we give ourselves space to turn inward and to start moving toward the possibility of our love so that I can support myself as I walk into my possibility. I recognize the ways I have participated in self-sabotage. I understand that underneath that can be fear, anxiety, feelings of worthlessness, and I make a decision to honor the parts of me that believe I am worthy, to honor the parts of me that choose to act in ways that advance and protect and preserve me. What will you do this week in honor of yourself? What will you do this week to get out of your way? What will you do this week to step off of your wings? I'm excited about the you that is manifesting as the self-saboteur gets fired. The self-saboteur gets removed so you can launch and be free. On today, despite the self-sabotage of the past, I invite your soul to tell your heart, mind, body, and spirit Welcome home.